This one makes me smile. The electrons face from the proton says, why so negative? So we're going to learn about some important electric field equations. And first of all, it's going to be electric potential energy. So this one right here, we're going to define it as, let's see, it's going to be E with a little subscript P, and it's going to be measured in joules. Okay, so that's nice. And how do we define it? We define it as the work done to assemble it from an infinite separation. In other words, at infinity, uh, if you bring it back, then that's what it's going to be. So if you bring it you know, from infinity over to where you are, the amount of work done you need to do, that's actually going to be your electric potential energy. So we've got an equation for it, and it goes like this. It's going to be E with a little subscript P. It's going to be equal to K Q1 Q2 over R. Now you don't have to memorize that, it's in your data booklet. I also like to write it, you know, sometimes I'll write it like this here with a, you know, because sometimes you have not a Q1 and Q2, but sometimes I like to look at it like this and say K capital Q lowercase Q over R. Do you notice it's not Coulomb's law where it's R squared? It's really important to know that, okay, it's different. So now how does this work? Well, if you look at this, this equation then, if you look at it, it's, uh, let's see, EP is proportional to 1 over R. So that means it looks like a 1 over X graph, so it looks something like this. Like that, that'll be EP. And what's interesting about it then is that, hey, what happens then at R equals infinity? As you go really, really far to R, that's when your EP is 0. Okay, so that's why we're going to say at the bottom here, hey, EP is 0 when R equals infinity. That's going to be important to know. Um, and let's actually just take a look at these different units. So what's the electric potential energy? That's going to be measured in joules. We've got K, which is our constant. So that's 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Uh, that's your Coulomb's constant. And then we've got Q1 and Q2. Those are charges. So that's just in Coulombs. And R is the distance between those charges. So that'll be measured in meters. And now we've got electric potential. Not to be confused with electric potential energy from before. This is just electric potential. So we're going to write as V with a little E, a little subscript E. And that's going to be measured in volts. Uh, okay, so let's actually go ahead and uh, define it. So that's the work done per unit charge to bring a test charge uh, from infinity to wherever you are. It might sound complicated. Let's look at the equation instead. So we've got V, a little subscript E, equals, let's see, it's going to be K, Q over R. But we've talked about work done, so we also have that equation. We have an equation for work done. It's just going to be Q times uh, delta VE. So uh, that'll be this one. Okay, and let's take a look at this one right here. Let's see this one. Um, it is, it's proportional to 1 over R again. So VE is proportional to 1 over R. So that means it must go like the uh, electric potential energy went. Something like this, VE, something like that. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the units for this thing right here. So uh, W is the work done to move the charge. So work done must be in joules. We've got Q or Q, like uppercase or lowercase Q. Those are just going to be charges in coulombs. Uh, R is the distance between charges. That's M. <laughs> Uh, that's in meters, I'm sorry. And then we've got K, that's just a constant. And this electric potential, remember, that's just V. So I want us to focus on this uh, exam tip here. I think this is going to be really important for us. Uh, first of all, the work done is going to be measured in either joules or electron volts. So I want you to know and remember that. Remember what electron volts are. That's where we say one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now, where did that come from? That's this whole idea that if you have uh, one... EV, let's see, that's if you take one electron, so that's the charge of an electron, that's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and you accelerate it across a potential difference of one volt. And if you do that, you end up with this value, right? Well, and it turns out it gives you half mv squared, which is the, this right here is the kinetic energy of this electron. But it turns out that one EV is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And instead of coulombs, it becomes joules. This is super, super important to know this, okay? So make sure you're uh, comfortable with using electron volts instead of joules. And remember that if you have no change in electric potential, in other words, delta VE is zero, well, then, of course, you're going to have no work done. Okay, so let's now define electric field strength. We're going to write it just capital E. Uh, we'll talk about the units in a second right here. Uh, well, first we have a, uh, an equation for it. So electric field strength is just going to equal uh, minus delta VE over delta R. 
And let's actually work out the units here. So first of all, let's work out, uh, well, delta VE, that's a change in electric potential. That's just measured in volts. Change in distance must be in meters. And then let's think about electric field strength. Do you remember what we did for electric field strength before? Remember we had E, for example, equaled, um, there's a few of the different ways, but you can say it's F over Q, for example. So because of that, then it would be newtons per coulomb. So that's why we're going to say it's in newtons per coulomb. That's what we're going to use here. So we're going to use those units of newtons per coulomb. If you wanted to find out an alternate unit, well, let's see. It could also be, let's see, it could be volts per meter, I guess you could say. But the typical one we use for electric field strength is newtons per coulomb. Now last I want to show you about equipotential lines. Let's put this one. Are you in charge of electric fields? Because you've got potential. Uh, so we've got the electric potential is going to be constant. See the word equi means same and potential. So the same potential. So let's just see what happens here. So maybe I'll just draw. Um, first I'm just going to draw the field lines around these. I'll draw those maybe in blue. So if I have a positive charge, where will the electric field go? Remember what electric field is. It's the direction that a positive test charge would go. So in this case of here, I'd maybe make it go out this way and out that way. Whoops, that was a bad arrow. And that way and that way. I hope you understand. And that way and that way and that way and that way. So I've just drawn a bunch of electric field lines at least. Well, how do we do these ones right here, these equipotential lines? They're going to be perpendicular to the field lines. So that means if these are here go this way, well, then it's going to be perpendicular, be 90 degrees. But then this one over here is over like this. It ends up basically making a circle. I'm going to try to draw a nice circle here. If it doesn't work, it's okay. I'll just make it bigger like this, or something like that. So these are, here will be these equipotential lines. And what's the meaning of those? Those are places where the electric potential is the same. In other words, this point and this point and this point and this point all have V is the same value. Now let's do it uh, for, let's say, two parallel uh, charge plates. This one's positive, this one's negative. Where will the electric field lines go? Well, the electric field, remember, it's where a positive would go. A positive would go to the right to go away from this, and it goes towards that. So it'll be pretty happy to go this way. These are here will be my electric field lines here like this. Okay, so those are my E lines. These are here are electric fields. Well, the um, equipotentials then will be 90 degrees to that. So maybe I'll draw one like right down the center, maybe something like that. That'll be an equipotential. But I can draw myself some more because remember what happens is at the edges here with these E's that it goes, it curves, doesn't it? This one here, you know, kind of curves like that. The outer ones, at least, they're going to curve. And because the outer ones are here curve, that means that the center one then will actually have to curve a little bit. So it'll be, you know, I don't know, something like this or something like, yeah, something like that. So those will be the shape of my equipotentials. And again, remember, if you're on an equipotential, there's no work done. Why is that? Because work is equal to, uh, well, it's Q times a change in um, potential. And if this right here is zero, then this is zero. I hope that makes sense.